to the Independent Investor Channel. We'll roll out the top 10 reasons why I think Hylion is a buy right here. I, I've said this for the for the last few months. This will be the last Hylion video that I come out with for a while, okay? There's no reason to ride this thing to the moon. Um, I'm obviously very bullish on the company, have been well before SPAC merger. I've been following this since its initial rollout. I've been an investor in the company. Uh, and um, my bullish thesis has done nothing but strengthen. Uh, over the months that it's been in the public market. I follow Hylion very, very close and uh, looking to push forward the information that I see from my perspective, because here's the thing, I don't have a goddamn agenda, okay? I don't come onto YouTube and share my, my, my uh, analysis of a stock or my insights of a stock uh, for any other reason than to share what it is that I see, because what I see a lot of the times on a company like this that's pre-revenue is that uh, short seller articles will become rampant, okay? And it's nothing but negative publicity. Stock analysts will downgrade uh, the stock with the idea that they can manipulate the stock and push it where we need to be. And I think as a retail community, we really need to stick together and we really need to understand here what the risks are. Yes, okay. Pre-revenue investing is not for everybody. And that's typically why I spend the majority of my time talking about fundamental wealth building uh, as a premise to my niche on the channel. Uh, and I hesitated for a couple months coming out with highly on videos. I thought that there's a pretty good coverage on the stock throughout the history of the last couple months anyway as Hylion has kind of been evolving as a company, yes, but the disconnect between what the company has been doing and what the stock uh, has, um, has done here really going down uh, for the totality of the last few months anyway, uh, at least since it's come into the public markets, it's really been punished. So where the company has really been accelerating and doing some great, great things, some of which were expected, uh, other things were not expected at all, the stock has continued to fall on us here and really create that disconnect between company and stock. So it's very, very important for us to come on and we need to discuss what is going on with Hylion here from the lens of multiple investors. And I don't want to take uh, the opinions of just the people who are bullish on the company and say, you're right, you're right, you're right. And all the um, bearish thesis about the company and say, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. As a matter of fact, we want to collect all of the information that is publicly uh, available. Because here's the thing. There's a lot of attempt to manipulate, keep down, repress, right? Because make no mistake, guys, there are a lot of large institutions that look at a company like this and they see nothing but dollar signs, okay? Their interest is in making money. And if they can drive a vulnerable company down in the short term to get a better prospective return long term, that is the game. That is the game. And it requires retail investors to be that much more edgy to be that much more interested in the company. Yes, to be interested in profits long-term, very, very important. But how many people have the uh, ability to exercise tolerance necessary enough to hold a name like this through all of the volatility? And, and, and this is not just gonna be a straight shoot up. It's not. Um, will the current price action on the stock hold? I don't know. While the current overhang of no revenue with the company is present, Hylion needs to break out of this rut. And make no mistake, in over 25 years of investing, good companies always prevail. Always. So if you're investing on the short-term thesis and the medium-term thesis that the stock is going to zero, or that the company doesn't have product, or that the company has no revenue, then go do something else with your time. Okay. I question if those are your thesis on Hylion, I question your ability to really look below the surface and see where deep value is in a company for the long term, not the short and medium term, but for the long term. We're going to roll out the top 10 things that I think are the most important when we're looking at a company. This is from the bullish thesis on Hylion. Let's get started. Number one is the leadership, Thomas Healy. This is the brainchild of 
Thomas Healy, the board has really gone through a restructuring. It's important to note bringing on Sherry Baker, I think, is a key strategic initiative. Matthew, uh, Matthew Luce in the uh, marketing department. Little things that people don't talk about when we're talking about um, highly on and how forward leaning they're being with their marketing campaign. I could care less if Thomas Healy is on Twitter every day, all day, like Trevor Milton. I could care less. Okay. Now, when you go over, and I'm pleasantly surprised by how night and day the website has been revamped and how amazing they've done in rolling out the explanation and walking through a would be uh, investor through their website, number one. Number two is the updated investor presentation. That's what means everything to me. But when we're talking about the leadership, it's not just going to be about the CEO that takes this company into the future. It is going to be about the team, okay? One individual at the top of an organization, yes, is very, very important to share and foster the shared vision of a company. Very important. However, Sherry Baker, behind the scenes, is going to have strategic initiatives from a financials perspective and, and, and tapping into her wealth of knowledge to bring to bear for a company like Hylion that is in the early stages of ramping up in development, uh, looking to pursue those avenues that's going to hit the bottom line in way of revenues eventually. Again, if you think they're never going to earn a dollar, that, that, that's, your, that's your opinion. I beg to differ, okay? I think it's just a matter of time before this company really starts to generate some revenue as they look to uh, scale up. But the leadership at the top, guys, very, very important. Street, key strategic positions have been put in place here to share in this company vision of a net negative carbon footprint future. And I, I think it's, it's a real discredit to yourself if you are underappreciating and underscoring the importance of the management team here at Hylion and what they've been able to bring together here in a relatively short amount of time. Very impressive. Number two is the addressable market. $800 billion of addressable market here. And you want to ask yourself, okay, you know, are we going after consumer staples? Are we going after a tobacco industry? Are we going after travel and leisure? No, we are not. We are going after the transportation industry, which is the number one polluter on this earth. Is there a reason for interest in this space? Does everybody have a vested interest in cleaning up the planet? Yeah, I'm not a tree hugger. But do I want to clean up the planet? Yeah, I do. And I think anybody out there in their right mind wants to do the same. And I think there's a lot of opinions that come in and say, to hell with that. I'm not putting that thing on my truck. You're, you're, you're missing the point here, okay? And I think a lot of these smaller trucking fleets, and this is something that I wanted to define in my first highly on video, is that a smaller trucking fleet, I'll just throw out a definition of any trucking company with less than five trucks in their fleet. Larger companies with, with uh, larger than five trucks in their fleet are going to be looking at the strategic advantage of transitioning their company to a greener future. Why? Think about it. If we have trucking companies that are starting to adopt the green initiative, and it is freaking coming, whether or not you like it or not, if you want to jump on board this paradigm shift or be left in the dust, that's going to be your prerogative to do so. But large companies are not going to be left in the dust. Why do you think Anheuser-Busch and Wegmans jumped on the ERX Innovation Council? They do not want to be that company that looks at, at this and is like, why are these companies over here? Why is Amazon stake taking a strategic direction in a liquefied natural gas future? And you're not. What gives? There's some real, real uh, headwind that can be created there if you're viewed upon as the company that is just focused on the bottom line and you do not have any type of uh, green score or any type of what is the impact to the environment. We're actually scoring companies based on this metrics now, guys, okay? So if you wanna be dubbed that company that is all about the bottom line and doesn't care at all about the environment, 
Well, look at it from the customer's perspective. Would you rather do business with the green uh, company that has taken this initiative on and still maintain a high level of efficiency within their business? Or do you want to opt for that customer who is stuck in the last century and not looking forward to the next hundred years of business? Okay, I'll leave that question to you guys. Very, very important. I know a lot of people don't like it when I talk about addressable market, but you have to make sure that there is a market out there that are going to buy these products. A lot of people are coming in, they're saying, Ryan, this is no good. The, tr the trucking company is not going to adopt this product. I beg to differ. Okay. And I don't, I don't appreciate it when people come in and they're like, it's a zero sum game. In other words, because other players are coming to bear, Hylion is going to cease to exist. I think everybody's going to exist in this environment. I think there's enough addressable market here to where short, short route, lower class vehicles are going to go full electric. But I think in the class eight space, there's no player out there that can boast the specifics on performance that the products that they roll out than Hylion, very simple. And these companies are coming together to merge with Hylion on the idea tank and identifying, look, we've got a route here. How realistic is it to put those trucks on that route? Is there fuel there to fuel the, the, the generators on board on both the hybrid system and the ERX system? check. Yes. Is there going to be support? Is there going to be driver support? Is there going to be a battery management system? Is there going to be availability to troubleshoot um, as these, you know, situations or logistics issues crop up on the road, right? These are all things that are going to spiral and start to make the company that much more viable when these routes are identified. And the very solution that is going to be put on those specific routes is the Hylion solution. Okay. Uh, next on the list is the product. This is number three, reasons to invest in Hylion. I've had people come into the channel and they're like, Hylion has no products. Honestly, if that is the level of your deliberation on a stock, I would recommend not analyzing stock anymore. This company, yes, indeed does have products and they have many, many more applications in the pipeline with their engineering department that they're looking to roll out. Okay. Okay. The products that is are worth mentioning, okay, is the hybrid system, both available for retrofit, which is on an existing Freightliner chassis, and the hybrid system on the uh, off the OEM on a new chassis once it's rollout. The third product is the Hypertruck ERX, right? The um, the ability to power the batteries with an onboard generating system with the complement of compressed natural gas renewable natural gas, uh, which is a, a phenomenal idea. It's available now, okay, which makes the partnership with A&G that much more uh, important. And finally, they've got the proprietary battery system that can charge in less than eight minutes. This is a multi-use uh, type of product. And some of the question that I have coming back is like, well, I don't want to install this. I've already got my DEF uh, exhaust cleaning system. I was forced to do it. I'm already forced to put low sulfur diesel into my truck uh, as a law over the highway. doesn't matter what state you're in now. You have to put low uh, sulfur diesel uh, in your truck at, at this particular juncture. I'm not going to continue to let the government or anybody tell me what it is that I'm going to do with my stuff. The game changes when the government steps in and says, hey, we're going to provide you a grant or an incentive program to install this system on your truck. Now it changes the game a little bit. And instead of being so defensive over my business, which I would be too, if I was a small truck owner and I was a single truck owner, I'd be like, I'd be damned if the government is going to come in and tell me what I'm going to do with my business, right? But we need to be able to keep stay open to the prospects of the government saying it's that important for us to really look at it. We need to provide some level of assistance for these small business owners that are already expending $150,000 plus for a new truck when it rolls off the line. We need to provide some level of certainty and support that they can uh, start to roll down the road with these products in place and keep the cost to the individual business owner to a minimum or dare I say free, dare I say free.
Okay, I've seen this happen with the government uh, um, rollout program of, of uh, supplementing for the tier one, two, uh, tier two, tier three uh, engines that they rolled out and saw a lot of people benefit from uh, installing and replacing their old engines with the new exhaust compliant engines for the air emissions regulations that rolled out. It becomes a little bit different there when uh, nice new machinery gets installed free of charge there. It's, a, it's an amazing incentive and it's amazing how often it changes people's mind uh, about saying, hell no, keep that crap away from me. I won't get near it. Or hmm, maybe since you're telling me it's going to be free, may maybe I can consider that as being an option, okay? Um, number four is the actual usefulness of the product, the actual application. Can it be, can it be put to use right away? The answer is yes, okay? Now, the, the, the idea here, and I find this interesting, is that the bull case for full electric vehicles is alive and well, okay? I just think the deeper discussion needs to happen on what that actually means. Is that truly green? Where is the electricity that's coming from this imaginary grid that everybody keeps talking about as the wave of the future coming from? Where is the electricity being generated from? Is it being generated from a coal burning plant just down the road, right? But everybody thinks they're plugging into a green initiative just because the, it's got Tesla written on the front of it, right? I think there's a deeper question to ask, you know, is, is full electricity the wave of the future? And I think the answer is yes. Yes, it is in certain applications, okay? But if that happens in five years, or it happens in 10 years, or if it happens 20 years down the line, who's to say? We currently have no infrastructure in place. And I don't think we are asking the right questions as to whether or not that is the wave of the future in totality or splitting up the market and really strategically looking at each and every route, each and every application and, and, and making the best solution fit. Thomas Healy has spoken about this many, many times, and he's been asked, what do you think? In the medium to short term, your solution seems to make sense, but are you a viable option into the future, okay? And the answer is absolutely yes, because I think every one of these applications are going to demand a little bit different of a product. The long haul truckers are going to demand a little bit different than those routes that are required for 500 miles or, or less, maybe there's a better application there, a cheaper application. But again, there's a lot that has to happen for uh, the electric market to come to fruition. And if we're not there now, and everybody's speaking as if this magical electric vehicle world exists. And I'm not talking about Tesla, okay? I'm talking about industrial purpose Freightliner use over the road. It doesn't exist. Okay, so application is super, super important and how useful it is right now at this current juncture. Okay, number five, the performance of the product. Okay, we're getting real results from the product, 20% fuel efficiency on the diesel. What that means is the $50,000 price tag uh, per uh, for diesel per truck per fleet times the number of trucks per fleet out there, 20% is huge. 20% is huge, right? So the question becomes, how long does it take for a, a system, whether it be a retrofit hybrid systems that's meant to supplement or assist in the consumption of diesel fuel when the truck is rolling down the line, uh, provide energy going uphill, save energy when it goes downhill with a regenerative braking system, right? And the ability to charge the batteries on the downside and use that power a lot more strategically. The question becomes, how long does it need to take before that product basically pays for itself? In other words, that's the standalone application. Take the government out of it for just a second and just think about if you get this thing installed, on the OEM, or you get it installed on an existing, and I think the existing fleet is going to probably come around from the perspective of, of let's say, you've got a, a truck that's 15 to 20 years old, and they want to take this and they want to try it out. What better opportunity than to take, put this on, 
you figure in two or three years, the system is going to pay for itself anyway, with the ability to supplement the cost that you would just rather put into the diesel charge, put the system on board, allow it to pay for itself after the first two or three years, and then have the system free of charge for the remaining two years of the chassis life of the truck. Now you can make an educated decision whether or not you want to scale into the next order that you make off of the OEM. It just makes perfect sense to me, right? So the performance is the key here for the hybrid system, both retrofit and OEM, right? The performance of the ERX, it, it, it cannot be, um, it cannot be uh, ignored. It's incredible. A thousand plus on the range, no other uh, rig comes close. There's proposals out there that I've seen. There's some competition discussion, both overseas in Europe, uh, as well as here on the home front, but nothing specs out. That's the thing is nobody's come in and said, yeah, we can beat the Hypertruck ERX at their own game. And furthermore, even if there is, even if there is some competition to bring to bear, isn't it going to be great to have multiple vendors out there, multiple competition? Now, if it doesn't, Hylion's going to the moon anyway, okay? If we have lack of competition, but I think I think Hylion has a once in a hundred year idea here, okay? And is it proprietary enough for other companies to say, maybe we do need an assist generator on board. Maybe we do need to store some power by nature of carrying that power with us. Maybe we do have to rethink what has been socially acceptable for the last hundred years with powering our freight, freight liners with straight diesel, right? Maybe there is an idea here that can be taken to mass scale by multiple entities, not just Hylion, Cummins, Volvo Penta, right? Let some of these other companies come to bear and, and collectively the technology can improve over time. But I've cross compared and I've yet to see a comparable product to Hylion, right? The next is the cost savings as a reason to take a look at the investment potential of Hylion, okay? The cost savings, uh, CNG, RNG available on the market at over 700 fueling stations across the country and into Canada as well. Uh, they've already partnered with American Natural Gas. It's ready to rock. The fuel is there and ready to go. Now, the RNG diesel comparison is, is, is where it's at, okay? And the cost savings on the compressed natural gas side of the house is reason enough to look at this company and really start to compare. Look, prices do fluctuate, okay? And, and I'm not saying that the, that the cost... Uh, it is going to become less conducive over time. But if you look at the numbers right now, cost of diesel equivalent, it's about three times more. And, and, and so the cost savings on the fuel side of the house to power the onboard generator uh, just makes sense here, okay? Now, when you're looking at cost savings for fleets, okay, you have to times that number by the number of trucks they're gonna look to install these systems on, okay? And, 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 and just incrementally increase the amount of cost savings to the fleets here, okay? The next is, I really wanna frame where Hylion has come from the beginning of 2020 when the SPAC was announced and where they've come now, okay? Going through the SPAC merger process was incredible. Putting the vote to the board to actually come public, huge milestones for the company. The progress and the growth in the company is worth noting, okay? We're, we're not talking about a speculative company here insofar as it's still within the SPAC process, which a ton of SPACs right now are just getting clobbered. Their uh, books are being scrutinized. The um, investor presentations that are rolled out through the SPAC process are really being uh, criticized and they're really, really being vetted uh, in, in no short order by the SEC taking a harder look at the SPAC process and making sure that this isn't just somebody's good idea before they come to public markets to make sure that that scrutiny is there uh, to protect investor interest, okay? But I think it's really important if you think about it and you just sit back for a second and look at some of the knowns and look at some of the unknowns, the website, the ERX Council, 
the battery management system. All this has been rolled out, the improvements to the board, the growth of the company. Last I heard up to 120 employees hiring on engineers from a very, very rich pool down in uh, Austin, Texas, okay? Uh, bringing on talented people to make sure that they're emboldening the team, uh, improving the product going forward, coming out with version two of the hybrid system, right? From a multifaceted perspective, how can you look at this company and say they are doing nothing but pushing forward? How can you say that? I, I have really seen no negative news at all except for the stuff that the short seller articles, especially on Investor Place, wants to come on and they want to write an article from a certain point of view. And that's a lot of the reason why I come out with this uh, series of highly on videos in the short fuse to tell my perspective in what I see in this company, okay? Um, another reason to invest in the company right here is the timing of the stock. Getting this stock less than $10, I don't know. As we speak, this stock could be moving above $10. Um, I tried my very best to put this video out at the time when I thought that it was creeping at a 52-week low, and it was around $8 a share, okay? Very, very disconnected from what is on the horizon for this company and what the short sellers have been able to do to really, really compress the stock down all is fair in love and war. It is illegal, <laughs> uh, but it is accepted business practices, I guess, in the industry. I don't know. I'm not a short seller. I'm a retail investor, and I advocate for retail investors. So um, you're not getting my shares. I'm not going anywhere, okay? I'm an investor in this company. I have a five-year time horizon. My first evaluation of what I will do with my current position will come at $100 per share, um, whichever one comes comes first, okay? And the timing right now for retail investors to be able to take a small position in this company or a large position, it's going to be up to you to do due diligence to make sure that the investment makes sense and it fits into your portfolio at the time of taking the investment. But man, it doesn't get any freaking better than this. And it's Great timing on my part to come on board. And if you didn't understand where the stock was trading or you've forgotten about it, it may be worth a second look to take a look at the stock at these levels, hovering around the $10 level. Um, so it's absolutely worth talking about how beat down it's been based on the short seller pressure put on the stock, as well as the disconnect between the good things that are going on with Hylion and the stock price. And the big institutions, they know this. They know this, but please acknowledge the agenda of the big institution is all about money. It's all about money. And as a retail investor, it can also be about money, but can, it can also be about the company. We have the ability to really do diligence and share information from a collective perspective on what we're seeing by some of these companies that only provide opportunity for a short amount of time. And We've just went through that opportunity, in my opinion, okay? Next is the approach at scope and vision. Who out there wants to clean the environment? I spoke a little bit about the company initiatives in getting involved in what is the front of the wave, okay? There's not going to be any companies out there that want to be that one company that says, you know what, your company sucks. I'm not getting involved. I'm not changing my mind. Government, stay out of my, my nookers. You know, I don't want to get involved while the rest of the fleet is doing what they need to do. This is indicative of the Innovation Council. There's enough large fleets stepping forward and saying, maybe this is inevitable. Maybe the time is now. Maybe we need to start paying attention to this. Maybe even Hylion is not our solution. But we need to start to engage in a conversation for a smarter solution, a cleaner future. Because what's been going on over the last hundred years of polluting the environment is by many accounts to be uh, visibly damaging the earth. So when you look at the scope and you look at the vision of this company, look at the amount of consumption that can be made of the carbon footprint and the reduction of carbon emissions by a solution like Hylion. 
it just feels good. It feels good. The initiative is right. The scope is right. And if they can execute on their vision, it's something that you can really, really get behind. Look, I've invested in Altria Group, okay? Do I feel good about investing in a company that kills people, right? By selling them cigarettes, which is known to be a carcinogen and kill you, right? Yes, I have. Because I separate my business from my emotional posture of a company. And if you don't have a green nexus or an environmentally uh, friendly score, then we just move on to different categories when we're evaluating companies. Hylion actually scores super high in that because the more it's adopted and the more the scope and vision of the Hylion team is realized going forward, the cleaner the earth can potentially be. And that's exciting for any investor out there, all right? The last thing that I'll mention here is the network potential. This is the biggest thing. And for you guys that are really interested in highly on videos, I don't really like the 10-minute videos who don't do a very in-depth kind of discussion about this company because 10 minutes really don't do it. And I don't care about the algorithm anyway. So I'll come on and I'll give the address for however long I think is necessary to put forward a good product. But reason 10 to invest in this company is the network. And I'm gonna address the network in a three tier, tier type of offering. First is the fuel network with American Natural Gas, right? And the incentives for uh, Freightliners to set themselves up on a subscription and a discount basis to get fuel credits to be put toward the fleet and, and, and provide that little bit of an incentive just on the fuel side uh, for what are we going to put in these trucks? Can we power them right now? Can we make it happen to put these systems on board to move these trucks down the road in the most efficient manner, save a little bit to the bottom line for the, for the, um, for the larger, for the fleet owners, right? The answer is yes. So from a fuel perspective, the over 700 fuel stations and the credits to the membership tier that ANG and Hylion have agreed to is key. The next is the partnership with the Innovation Council, okay? This is important because the Innovation Council, the 10 that were selected to be part of the council, uh, Werner, Schneider, Ruan, Penske, Anheuser-Busch, Greenpath, Ryder, Wegmans, and a couple others, super important because those are the top tier that are gonna kind of write the script here. And when you talk about peer influence, I think what you're gonna see here is a domino effect where you get one large company to start to put to use some of these products and really start to realize some of these bottom dollar savings. Maybe it comes up in some of the analysts call to say, look, we've made an investment into our fleet's future and here's what it's meaning for the bottom line you're going to have other companies falling in line like dominoes because the last thing you want to see as a company is to fall behind and not be uh, astute to those paradigm shifts when they happen. This is a paradigm shift that is at the very, very beginning of rolling out, okay? And the last thing you want to be is that company that's stuck holding the bag uh, while the parade is going by you and be late to the party, while these other fleets are enjoying all this cost savings and really getting in on the ground floor of providing their strategic initiatives. What's going to work for them? You think you don't think Anheuser-Busch is going to sit at that innovation council and provide real feedback as to how they can align this product to, to benefit Anheuser-Busch? They've got themselves in this in in their in their best interest. Wegmans, how are they going to take the solution and fit it into their solution or their logistics issues? Right? How is the temper temperature differentiation? Are we going to have to accommodate for our partners to the north in Canada and the partners down south who are dealing with hundred plus degree temperatures in the summer? You don't think that that innovation council are going to bring all of these uh, uh, logistics issues and constructive criticism to bear for their own benefit? You're crazy. You're crazy. Anheuser-Busch knows what they're doing. So does Wegmans and so does Ryder. 
they're bringing all of these issues to bear with the idea that their time isn't just to uh, put their two cents into the barrel and then walk away. That's not why they're doing this. They're doing this to really test the viability of the system and how useful it can be in their fleet. The third thing I will mention in way of the network is the X factor in Hylion. The X factor in Hylion is this. And if you stuck around for the totality of this long video, I do this for a reason, honestly. Um, so the people who really aren't interested in Hylion at all, they've probably already left within the first couple of minutes. But the X factor in the network with Hylion is the US government. Government incentive to provide these systems to fleets with a grant or an incentive. And the Biden administration, no matter how you feel and wherever your political affiliation lies, is a green friendly administration. And you don't think it's going to take one announcement with the connections with Hylion, with Andrew Card, and his old connections with the Department of Transportation are going to play a factor in the evolution of this company. Again, if this is something that you choose not, not to acknowledge about Hylion, I suggest you, you pick up another craft or actually learn how to evaluate a company and its true value and not just look at the stock price day to day as it retracts on us. And that's the end all be all of your evaluation that somehow Hylion is going to zero or that they do not have products or that because they don't have revenue at this particular juncture, that that's reason and enough not to invest in this company. That's very, very short-sighted. And you may leave, be leaving a ton of profit on the table in foregoing your opportunity at getting in on Hylion, which is what I feel is a great opportunity here at the ground level. Few shout outs, RP Music TV, doing a good job of putting out some uh, consistent content on Hylion. Wall Street Engineer as well is the second on the list. And Kenny with 18 Wheel Investing, shot out from the independent investor on all three of those channels. And finally, J Mac Investing, who uh, did a great job on the interview with Thomas Healy. I have my inquiry in uh, with Hylion to get Thomas Healy in on um, an opportunity with the independent investor channel. So hopefully we can bring that to bear here in the near future because I can't wait to conduct the interview my style because I've got some questions for the top man on top who's done a great job in a very short amount of time bringing this company from SPAC to publicly traded company and, and, and pushing the initiative forward into the future. Guys, if you appreciate the message coming forward, you want to make sure and subscribe to the Independent Investor Channel. Share this message with anybody out there that you know is interested in this company, in, interested in the technology. It's a great, great initiative to go on to the website, even if you don't want to invest in the company. Go study what these guys are doing. It's pretty incredible. And finally, you want to leave your comments at the bottom of this video, as I know you will. We've got a great pool. I don't care if you're in the bear camp. I don't care if you're in the bull camp. All opinions are welcome as long as they're done with some level of common courtesy and, um, and some sort of depth of information as to how you generated your opinion uh, on what I feel is going to be the wave of the future uh, in net carbon negative emissions control rolled out by the products that Hylion is working so hard to scale up uh, to the mass fleet. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.